This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Many psychologists are in agreement that the number one problem for most people is simply unhappiness. They have no real sense of joy in life. They feel little more vivacious than wet socks on a sagging clothesline after a cold drizzle. But what is happiness? Where do you get it and how? Are there laws, principles, and rules you can follow for the attainment of happiness? Two thousand years ago... One Jesus of Nazareth declared that there are, and he outlined them at the beginning of his most famous sermon. I'll summarize that in a moment. But happiness may be yours if you will follow the spiritual principles necessary to find it. In Cervantes' classic novel, at one point in the plot, Don Quixote says, To know the disease is the commencement of the cure. There is a simple truth which few have learned. To be specific, people who try to find happiness in material possessions are simply practicing the wrong cure for unhappiness. Because happiness is a spiritual product. To seek joy through the acquisition of things is like sniffing nasal spray to cure athlete's foot. It doesn't work. Spiritual problems must have spiritual answers. Jesus taught, Happy are the humble-minded, for they already own the kingdom of heaven. How happy are those who know what sorrow means, for they will be given courage and comfort. Happy are those who claim nothing, for the whole earth will belong to them. Happy are those who are hungry and thirsty for goodness, for they will be fully satisfied. Happy are the kind-hearted, for they will have kindness shown to them. Happy are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Happy are those who make peace, for they will be known as the sons of God. Happy are those who have suffered persecution for the cause of goodness, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. And what happiness will be yours when people blame you and ill-treat you and say all manner of slanderous things against you for my sake? Be glad then. Yes, said Jesus, be tremendously glad, for your reward in heaven is magnificent. The living of life, as Jesus taught it, is a joyous, abundant, and positive experience. And it may be yours in the faith to claim at this moment. Helen Keller once wrote, many people have a wrong idea about what constitutes real happiness. It is not attained through self-gratification, but through fidelity to some worthy purpose. End of quote. The highest possible worthy purpose is doing the will of God for your life. God has a plan for this planet and a purpose for your individual existence. And if you seek it, you will find it. The great rabbi Joshua Liebman has written, The human self is not a gift. It is an achievement. It is not a static reality sprung full-blown. Rather, it is a painfully earned progress past lions in the way, a triumph over ogres real and imaginary. The attainment of a self is a running battle, a continuing progress. End of quote. The highest possible happiness is living valiantly as the spiritual child of God you really are. Consider these writings from an old East Indian book. Dig a big hole in the garden of your thoughts, and into it put all your disillusions, disappointments, regrets, worries, troubles, doubts, and fears, and forget them. Cover well with the earth of fruitfulness. Water it from the well of contentment. Sow on top of it the seeds of hope, courage, strength, patience, and love. And then, when the time of gathering comes, may your harvest be a rich and fruitful one. Few decisions which you can make, will create such profound inner peace and happiness as instantly and as intensely as the whole-souled choice of goodness in your life. There's an almost infinite inner sigh of relief when any man or woman unreservedly commits himself or herself to doing the will of God, to goodness as best he or she is able to discern it. It resolves more mental and spiritual conflicts than a lifetime of psychiatry ever could. Said Jesus, my peace I give to you. There is a peace of God which literally passes all understanding. It is the peace of living your life in faith. But you must not ask for it selfishly. Seek joy for the sharing, not for the possessing. Seek love for the giving, not for the having. Seek truth for the living of it, not merely for the hoarding of it selfishly to yourself. Freely you have received, freely give. Do to others as you would have them do to you. On one occasion, King George V 
was asked to write a message on the flyleaf of an old Bible, and he wrote, The secret of happiness is not to do what you like to do, but to learn to like what you have to do. And Abraham Lincoln said, I have found that most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. The psychologist Frank Crane once said, It takes so little to make people happy, just a touch, if we know how to give it, just a word fitly spoken, a slight readjustment of some bolt or pin or bearing in the delicate machinery of a soul. A happy man or woman, wrote Robert Louis Stevenson, is a better thing to find than a five-pound note. He or she is a radiating focus of goodwill, and their entrance into a room is as though another candle had been lighted. So may you be a radiating focus of goodwill, a font of undiscourageable goodwill, Loving God and loving people and the love of God welling up within your heart and soul will well over into the lives of every other person you encounter. Real religion will first strengthen your weakness, then govern your strength. For greatness is power controlled by goodness, idealism ruled by righteousness, thought dominated by truth, and a life governed by God. Thus, Offer your very life to the Father of all, and your life will be transformed. The true answers to prayer are wisdom, insight, strength, and courage, love, joy, patience, and understanding, hope, kindness, peace, and purpose. For these are the very highest gifts of God. They are spiritual. Said Jesus, with God, all things are possible. The Roman philosopher Seneca once wrote, All of my life I have been seeking to climb out of the pit of my sins, and I can't do it. And I never will, unless a hand is let down to draw me up. That assistance is available in the love of God, the will of God, the mercy and forgiveness of God. Jesus once said, What a faithless people you are! How long must I be with you before you will believe? How long must I bear your lack of faith? And one man said, I do believe, but help me to believe more. There's a potent power in your personal faith. Much knowledge of things divine escapes us through our want of faith, wrote Heraclitus. And Joseph Fort Newton said, Belief is a truth held in the mind, but faith is a fire in the heart. May that burning fire illumine your heart. The fire of faith, the certitude that you are a spiritual child of God, you are loved, God's forgiveness and newness of life are available to you this very instant. Every other person you encounter in all your life, in all your career, is a brother or a sister. There are no strangers, only friends, brothers, and sisters you have not yet met. This entire planet was intended to live as one great family, the family of God. In finding that vital truth and living your life by it, is a revitalized perspective on all reality. But you must not only believe it and think it, you have to live it. One time Jesus said, What is your opinion about this? There was a man with two sons. He went to the first and said, Go and work in my vineyard today, my son. This lad said, All right, sir. But he never went near it. Then the father approached the second son with the same request. He said, I'm not going to do it. But afterward, he changed his mind and he went. Which of these two did what their father wanted? And the people who were listening to Jesus tell this parable answered, The second son. Yes, said Jesus, and I tell you that tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God before you. Jesus makes it undeniably clear. Lip service to God is not enough. It is actually doing the will of God, aligning your mind, your life, your time and energies with the wisdom and the purposes of the author of all creation, and saying, it is my will that yours be done. Goethe said, epics of faith are epics of fruitfulness, but epics of unbelief, however glittering, are barren of all permanent good. And wrote Schweitzer, no ray of sunshine is ever lost, but the green which it wakes into existence needs time to sprout, and it is not always granted to the sower to live to see the harvest. All work that is worth anything is done in faith, and your life if it is truly to fulfill its potential, must likewise be lived in faith. I one time read the story of an elderly woman who had suffered for long, weary months from a crippling, painful illness. But one day she said to a friend of hers, I have a lovely robin that sings outside of my window. In the early mornings, as I lie there, this robin serenades me, and then a smile brightened her pain-twisted face, 
And she added, I love that Robin especially because he even sings in the rain. Let the joy of God thus fill your heart as well with a gladness that sings in the rain and the storms, the gladness of knowing your God in living faith accepting his love, his forgiveness, his newness of life for you this very moment, and living evermore as a transformed child of God as you were born to be. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute or abbreviated SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.